To whom do you listen to most? Whether it's in writing, what you read, what you watch on TV, who are the people that you listen to most? Not the people who, who know you, right? I listen to my wife probably most, but, but I'm talking about the people who, who you don't know, the people that if you ran into them, they wouldn't know who you are. It, it's sort of a one-way thing here. We're looking at that today because that's the relationship between uh, Joseph and Mary and these, these wise men who show up. They've never seen them before, but they're going to listen to them because they are, are wise, right? So who are the people that you've never actually met that you listen to? For me, uh, it would be people like, there's a guy named John Dickerson. He does the politics for CBS. Um, Adam Hamilton, pastor over in Kansas City, you may have heard of. People like, like that. Uh, have, you, have you got that list together? Think, think, let's say three. Who are the top three people that you listen to? All right. As you think about those three people, are they wise? Are the people that you spend your time listening to wise? To sort of explore what it means to be wise, I mean, how, what is, how would you even describe someone as wise? I'm going to propose a, a comparison. I'm going to propose uh, to compare the three wise men to what may be one of the most listened to people in America. Anyone want to make a guess who that is? Oprah, right? If you had to think one person, who is one of the people who's been most listened to in the last generation? I would propose Oprah. That uh, I don't even watch Oprah, and I know I, I've heard about Oprah growing up all my life from my mom, right? It, Oprah's on and Martha Stewart, it's a good thing. Those are the two sort of poles of what my mom listened to growing up. The point being, uh, I want to compare these two. Oprah has this fascinating life history. She was uh, born uh, it, in a broken family, got into radio, really just didn't have much going for her until she had this opportunity, and uh, it was in Chicago, she had this opportunity to do a talk show, and, and she told the guy who hired her, you realize you're hiring an overweight African-American lady to do a talk show, and, and he said yes. And that was her start, so she starts uh, with this talk show, and, and has grown into this amazing thing where she inspires people, she is loved by people, uh, she has this sense that she's talking to you, and you'd love to have a cup of coffee with her, right? Uh, she has done some great things with, with herself. Uh, she built a school in South Africa for girls. She gave $10 million towards rebuilding houses destroyed by Hurricane Katrina. Uh, as far as I know, Oprah is a good person. And if she walked in the door right now, uh, I would welcome her. And then I'd ask her, why is she in northern Missouri? But uh, I, I have no problem with her. I mean, she's, she's a good person. If you had to ask yourself about Oprah, though, uh, this question, though, is she wise? Right. Let's compare her to the wise men. The wise men, we don't know anywhere near as much about them as we do about Oprah. What we do know is that they studied cultures that were very different from their own. Right? For, for the people, the, these Eastern scholars, probably in a Persian culture or something like that, uh, for them to study the Hebrew scriptures meant first they had to learn Hebrew, then they had to study something that the, their own culture denied was true in an attempt to make more sense of the world. The best analog I could come up with is one of us deciding, I want to learn Arabic so I could learn the Quran because I think it'd make me a better person. That'd be quite a challenge, wouldn't it? Arabic, whew, it's a hard language. Uh, second, not only were they willing to study far outside their own culture, they were willing to, to take some pretty big risks to test their understanding. They were willing to, based upon this reading of a book that's from a completely different culture, they were willing to take a long journey, months and months and months, to go meet a potential uh, king. And then on the way, they were willing to question authority. Notice they show up to Jerusalem and they talk to Herod first. You go to the nation's capital when you're trying to look for the newborn king. Makes sense. But when they're warned in this dream not to go back via Herod, they go, okay. And they're, so they're okay with questioning authority, the, the givens, and then they are okay with... Um, with changing their assumptions. If you show up looking for a newborn king, you go to the capital city. That's where they went, Jerusalem. And when you sort of, what are they expecting of this newborn king? Well, probably they're expecting someone who's attended to by a whole a legion of nursemaids, well guarded, well cared for, and then what do they actually find? They get to uh, Bethlehem, they find 
a single child who's being cared for by one frazzled mother. That's not saying that Mary was anything less than wonderful, but to be a young mother is by definition to be frazzled. Uh, so they were still willing to say, let's offer these gifts. They didn't look at Mary and say, eh, well, this can't be right and leave. They were willing to take a closer look. And so that's what makes them wise. That's what we see in them, studying far beyond their culture, being willing to test it, being willing to change their assumptions. That is what we see in the wise men that makes them wise. And that's really, well, have you ever watched Oprah and had your, have your life changed? Uh, Oprah is many things, but I think the best, the best word for her is comfortable. Right? I think that's the best word I can come up with. I was talking to my mom about this, and i got to give her credit for it. Oprah is comfortable. I think that's uh, what her purpose is to be. She wants people to feel good about themselves. She wants to help them feel good. And uh, she's not doing anything challenging, anything crazy. Uh, she's just comfortable. And, and so I think this is the, the two poles of the people we listen to. If we look at the people we listen to, most of the people, most of the times they can either be described as comfortable or, or as wise. And comfortable, you know, comfortable is appealing. Let me just confess up front, I like comfortable. Comfortable people, people are, are the people who agree with me, people who uh, think I'm right, who, who tell me I'm right, who, who reinforce what I already know. And, and so I, I like comfortable people as much as, as anyone. Um, the, the people that I listen to that make me feel good about myself, that, that are comfortable for me, it's not Oprah, but the, it, it's other folks, but you probably wouldn't know them because... My tastes are a little bit esoteric. The point being, we like to listen to people who agree with us, right? make us feel like we're right. But that's not everything. It's, it, it, we've got to listen to some people like that, but there are times when we need to accept and seek out those who are wise, accept them in to, to our lives. And, and it is a choice to accept people in who are wise, who, who are going to uh, shake things up, who are going to question things. I, I think when it comes to the the wise men showing up, we have this really sort of this snapshot of what happens that simplifies it greatly, that sort of misses this key moment where Mary and Joseph have to accept them in. Because how we usually think of the wise men is that, uh, so Mary has a kid, and then we sort of imagine the shepherd showing up. How quickly? How quickly do you think the shepherds show up? Half hour? hour, they come on in, and they go, yay Jesus, and they all like bask, a newborn kid. And then how quickly do the, the, the wise men show up? They, they show up the next hour or so, right? And then they show up, and, and then it's like, and that's what all of our little uh, nativities show. The, the baby Jesus with the um, shepherds, and, and Mary and Joseph, and the three wise men walking in while the shepherds are still there, and it's all very warm and fuzzy. But, and then they give their gifts, and then they go home. But that's not actually how it unfolded, was it? The, the light, the star, uh, started to shine when Jesus is born. And so the shepherds show up that night, and the shepherds go home to watch their flock. The star has just started to burn in the sky, and that's the earliest the, the wise men could leave. The earliest the wise men can start heading towards Jesus is the night he is born. And so when do the wise men show up? at least a few months later. And so by the time the wise men show up, a few months later, Joseph has set up shop in Bethlehem, and he's doing his business. And Mary is coping with this newborn child, wishing he'd sleep a little bit longer. And, um, and things are sort of back to normal. And the Magi, sort of the three wise men, or however many wise men there are, they come into town with this caravan, and they don't speak the language, and they look funny, and they talk funny, and they smell funny, and they're not from around here, and they come into town, and they go up, and they knock on Joseph and Mary's door, and what do you think they do? Well, let me ask you this. If someone walked on your knocked on your door you've never seen before, they look weird, they look strange, they don't speak your language, and they want to come in and see your, your newborn kid, are you going to open the door and welcome one on in? Nope. I can tell you that with some authority because I live in a parsonage. And I've had some very th weird things knock on my door. Every person who's ever knocked on my door is a child of God, and I have always done whatever I can to serve them. But there are times when someone's knocked on my door, and, and, and Fletcher or Sophia's behind me, and rather short, while I go, I'm glad you're here. Can I meet you for coffee down, downtown? And it's kind of close to me. And, and yeah, I, I don't just welcome anyone into my house. I got my kids back here, right? And, and so Mary and Joseph, new parents, 
when these three w weird looking dudes knock on their door, I have a feeling they got to the opportunity to cool their heels for a bit, go down to the local inn, hopefully there was room for them, and, uh, and they were able to just kind of chill for a bit. I don't think it was a given that Mary and Joseph were going to invite these people in. They finally did. They were able to recognize them as wise, and, and that's a good thing, and they received the gifts that were offered. And the most important gift was not the gold, frankincense, or myrrh. The most important gift was for them to have reinforced yet again who this child was, right? The most important gift is not the stuff they brought, but the knowledge they shared. And, but they, they were able to welcome them in and, and to recognize them. But it was a decision that Mary and Joseph had to make. And I, I think that's what really strikes me about this scripture as we look at it this year. We have to choose to invite and accept wise uh, people, wise things into our lives because it is far easier to take what is comfortable, what, is, what it already agrees with us, what's not going to push us. And so we have to choose how much wisdom are we going to seek because there's only so much we can listen to during the day. Right? This is January. We're, we're all looking at the rest of our year. I don't know what you're... When you look at the rest of the year, I don't know what you're doing. I'm making my list of books to read. And, and I'm being honest with myself this year. I'm saying one book a month is about what I can probably tackle. That's 12 books. Some of you have seen my stack of unread books. There are more than 12 books on that stack. <laughs> but there's only so much time. And so who am I going to listen to? Who am I going to listen to when I'm driving down the road? Who am I going to listen to when I seek out the news? Who are the people I'm going to listen to when I go have coffee? Who am I going to listen to? And is it going to be people who are comfortable or is it going to be people who are wise? who are going to push me, who are going to challenge me, who are going to bring me new thoughts, new ways of thinking. People who are not going to hesitate to say, I might have been wrong, let's figure out what's, what's right. People who are willing to question assumptions and learn as they go. All right? I, I can only speak for myself, but, but I want to listen to the wise. Not all the time, because every once in a while I need my Oprah, or, or my personal version of it, the p things that make me feel good about myself. But I do need to listen to those who are wise. And part of what that means is when I listen to someone who disagrees with me, I'm going to have to sit down and think about it. Is this person wise and helping me understand something important? Or are they a wingnut? Because it could be either. You never know. But when someone disagrees, it either means that they're bringing you new wisdom, a gift from God, or they're crazy. you got to sit down and figure on it, though, don't you? Maybe they're wise. Maybe this is a gift. Maybe they're crazy. I commit. Uh, my goal is I'm going to make, seek out the time to seek out the wise, to seek out the gifts. They are, are going to bring us the gifts of new understanding, the gifts of better ways to see God's world, the better ways to serve and, and meet people. And I would encourage you to start to do the same this year. To look at, again, think of that list of three people you listen to most. Are they wise? Is there someone you need to seek out to listen to that is wise? Is there, and this could be uh, poetry or history or biography, reading something you haven't read, reading something a little bit more ambitious than you've engaged before. It could be going and sitting at the feet of someone who is wise. Uh, there's a knife maker south of Macon. I need to go sit at his feet and just watch him work. Because I, I think there's real wisdom in how people use their hands. And I just need to go sit and watch that, because I'm intrigued by it. I need to learn that, right? Uh, so it, it could be the wisdom of what we read, what we watch. It could be the wisdom of, of engaging with people we, we disagree with and, and seeing what we might learn from them. Asking why does it make sense to them? Because obviously it makes sense or else they wouldn't believe it. Epiphany, that what we celebrate this day, is uh, the idea of realizing something new. And uh, Mary and Joseph had this epiphany when they realized they needed to invite these wise men into their lives, recognizing them as wise, even though they were very, very strange, and, and welcoming them in to, to bring what God would offer them. And so it's my prayer that we as a church might be a, a community that recognizes wisdom and welcomes it in, and in doing so, being willing to be stretched and be challenged, to see in new ways, to practice new practices, in doing so, to grow in our understanding of God's creation, accepting that what God offers is not always going to come from the people who make us feel comfortable. Amen.